My name is Jane Moon, and I'm an anesthesiologist in Los Angeles who is a Wood Library Museum Fellow in 2018. Today, I'll be talking about John Soveringhouse's Blood Gas Analyzer. First, I will give you some biographical background, and then I will discuss some of the specifics of this remarkable device. John Soveringhouse was born on May 6, 1922, and is considered to be one of the greatest research anesthesiologists of all time. He spent his childhood in Madison, Wisconsin, where his family was friends with some well-known anesthesiologists, including Ralph Waters, chair of the first academic department of anesthesiology in the nation. Waters' office was next to Severing House's father's at Wisconsin General Hospital. In college at Haverford, Severing House studied physics, and so was exempt from the World War II draft. After graduation, he was sent by the government to the MIT Radiation Laboratory, or Rad Lab, where he helped develop military radar equipment. That fall, he also met his future wife, Eleanor Peck, who was attending Wellesley at the time. On August 6, 1945, when the world discovered that American physicists had created the bomb that devastated Hiroshima, Severinghouse was appalled at the ability of physics to do harm. And so he left Rad Lab to go to medical school with the hope of applying electronics to healthcare. He gained immediate admission to the University of Wisconsin Madison as the school's military medical student program had just closed. Severing House finished the last half of medical school at the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, where he won a research award and gained the respect of anesthesia director Virginia Apgar for his design of a portable electrophrenic respirator. After medical school, Severing House chose a two-year rotating internship in Cooperstown, New York, which allowed time for research in a clinical laboratory. During internship, he published his first paper, which discussed his invention of a photometric way to measure plasma calcium levels. Seeking postdoc training in biophysics after internship, Severing House visited several academic departments and was convinced by Robert Drips at Penn that anesthesiology would allow him to combine biophysics with medicine. It was as a first-year anesthesia resident that he presented his landmark study on the rate of nitrous oxide uptake in man, which was inversely related to the square root of time. Also during this year, he was sent by Drips to work in the lab of leading respiratory physiologist Julius Cumro. One of Severinghouse's residency classmates at Penn was Peter Saffer, future inventor of modern CPR. When the anesthesia department received its first supply of succinylcholine in 1952, Saffer and Severinghouse decided to test it on each other before using it on patients. The experience taught them that the drug induced apnea before full muscle paralysis and that fasciculations caused pain for several days. After a year and a half at Penn, the doctor draft took Severing House to the U.S. Public Health Service at the New National Institutes of Health, or NIH, Clinical Center Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. For the next five years, he served as director of anesthesia research at NIH, practicing clinical anesthesia for one day a week. There, he worked closely with technician Freeman Bradley, with whom he would maintain a lifelong friendship. Severing House and Bradley were incredibly productive. They coined the term alveolar dead space as a separate entity from anatomic dead space. They designed an esophageal catheter called the Telecor that simultaneously served as an esophageal stethoscope, temperature probe, and EKG amplifier. They also refined techniques in blood gas analysis. They studied pulmonary function in dogs during hypothermia to highlight the need to correct blood carbon dioxide values to body temperature. They refined ways to calculate partial pressure of carbon dioxide, or PCO2, from pH and plasma CO2 content, which still relied on the use of the henderson hassel balk equation. They also found ways to minimize loss of CO2 during blood centrifuge to make more precise pH measurements. They found and corrected errors in the standard tables for carbon dioxide solubility in plasma. Despite all of these improvements, however, PCO2 measurement was still very slow. It took an hour to analyze each sample. It was at an August 1954 American Physiologic Society meeting in Madison, Wisconsin, that a presentation by Richard Stowe from Ohio State University Medical School changed Severing House's life. Reading an article about ion-selective electrodes had inspired Dr. Stowe to invent a carbon dioxide electrode. 
This was a necessity since he worked with polio patients who were being ventilated in iron lungs and thus needed rapid arterial PCO2 analysis. In order to make his glass carbon dioxide electrode, Stowe had combined a pH electrode with a reference electrode, covered it in a thin layer of distilled water, and then wrapped it in a latex membrane that was permeable to CO2 but not to acid ions. However, he questioned his electrode's utility due to a persisting drift. Within a week of the presentation, Severing House and Bradley, after notifying Stowe, had built their own version of the CO2 electrode, which had been modified by adding bicarbonate to the film of distilled water. Stowe feared that the bicarbonate would abolish the signal, but it actually made the device more stable and more sensitive. Severinghouse and Bradley also replaced the latex membrane with Teflon, which they found to be less likely to leak ions and cause drift. They also added cellophane as a spacer material to hold the thin liquid foam between the glass electrode and the outer Teflon membrane. As they refined their version of the CO2 electrode over the next year, Severinghouse and Bradley were able to speed up their PCO2 analysis time from one hour to two minutes. Direct measurement of blood oxygen tension was even more difficult. Most respiratory physiologists at the time determined blood partial pressure of oxygen or PO2 levels using the Riley bubble method, which required incredible dexterity, equilibration in a 37 degrees Celsius bath, and was only accurate in desaturated blood with a partial pressure of oxygen less than 80 millimeters mercury. Polarography was another promising method, but was seriously limited by contamination of the platinum cathodes when exposed to blood. Leland Clark, PhD, a research chemist at Antioch College in Yellow Springs, Ohio, revolutionized the world of blood gas analysis when he created the first successful oxygen electrode. By combining the oxygen electrode with a reference electrode, and by using an outer polyethylene membrane for electrical insulation, polarography could work without the threat of cathode poisoning by blood proteins. Polyethylene, with its poor oxygen permeability, decreased oxygen consumption and was thus a better agent than cellophane. Clark had unexpectedly created his oxygen electrode. At first, he had built one of the first blood oxygenators to perfuse animal livers for studying hepatic metabolism of hormones. This bubble oxygenator then became the basis for one designed for human cardiac surgery but publication in Science Magazine had been delayed on the condition that Clark also measure blood oxygen levels before and after passing through the oxygenator. Serendipitously, in April of 1956, Severinghouse had called an ad hoc meeting of some respiratory physiologists to discuss the problem of blood PO2 measurement at the Federation of American Societies for Experimental Biology. When Clark pulled his oxygen electrode out of his pocket even before the meeting began, Everyone was stunned and immediately knew that he had solved the problem. This revelation led Severinghouse to delay publication of his own Stowe Severinghouse CO2 electrode since it became clear that both the oxygen and carbon dioxide electrodes should now be used and reported together. Also in 1956, Severinghouse moved to Iowa City to complete his second and final year of anesthesia residency in Stuart Collins department. Due to the department's close relationship with the Department of Physiology, technicians there were able to make the blood gas apparatus that Severinghouse and Bradley had designed at NAH. It housed both the Stowe Severinghouse PCO2 electrode and the Clark PO2 electrode in a thermostat water bath. The Clark oxygen electrode was placed in a holder that had a stirring paddle within a cuvette in order to decrease oxygen consumption from a stationary blood sample and a tiny tonometer was also added to the thermostat to optimize calibration. After completing his final residency year, Severinghouse returned to NIH and was soon recruited along with Stuart Cullen to the University of California, San Francisco by respiratory physiologist Julius Camro, with whom he had worked at Penn. Camro was now director of a new cardiovascular research institute at UC San Francisco and had convinced the chair of surgery to allow for the creation of a newly independent department of anesthesiology, the first in California, with Cullen as chief. Shortly after deciding to move to San Francisco, Severinghouse presented his first two-function blood gas analyzer at the October 1957 American Society of Anesthesiologists, or ASA, annual meeting. 
Later commercial versions of Clark's oxygen electrode would greatly decrease its diameter and thus obviate the need for the supplemental stirring paddle and tonometer. Severinghouse also convinced Freeman Bradley to go with him to UCSF, and Bradley would eventually become director of the UCSF Research and Development Laboratories. After settling into UCSF, Severinghouse and Bradley added a McInnes Belcher pH electrode to their device in 1959 and thus created their now famous three function blood gas analyzer, which you can see here. After Severinghouse joined Cullen and Cumro at UCSF, his research career only continued to grow. He helped locate the respiratory control center in the medullary ventral chemoreceptors. He examined the effect of high altitude on acid base derangements, respiratory regulation, and cerebral blood flow. He designed a blood gas slide rule and published the standard human oxygen dissociation curve. He designed transcutaneous blood gas monitors to help prevent retinopathy of prematurity. He helped develop multiplexed mass spectrometry for monitoring patients with multiple ORs and initiated the continuous testing of pulse oximeters for their accuracy during hypoxia. Severinghouse held an NIH Research Career Award from 1963 to 1991 and published more than 300 papers. He received the first ASA Excellence in Research Award in 1986, and in 2008, the ASA Plenary Lecture on Translational Science was renamed the John W. Severinghouse Lecture on Translational Science. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about this object, please visit the Wood Library Museum website.